how did this all start? So it started off, I knew I was going on sabbatical. I knew this organization, because I've been there four other times before and done photography before. I've never done anything like this, though. So it's uh, the fall, I get approved, and they say, yes, you get sabbatical, and I'm going, okay, now what am I doing? <laughs> So it literally started with me just praying, saying, God, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with the other yet. And then one day, I had just, I just saw these big girls. And I've used the process, the cyanotype process before, but more just kind of for fun. You know, I'd never done a serious art project. And I've taught it to my students, but in a smaller format. And so I thought, okay, this will be cool. And then um, I bought one of these pieces of fabric you can buy from this company. They're actually out of Petaluma. And it was great, except it had terrible creases in it. So I called them up and I said, hey, can you sell it to me as a bulk roll? And they did. So I just got this big roll of it. And I thought, okay, now I gotta take it to Cambodia. <laughs> we gotta make these images, right? So I start sketching all of these images that you see. And they're just rough sketches. And I said, okay, here we go. Oh, they're mainly based on the Book of Psalms, which just talks a lot about healing and restoration and that, because that's what these girls need, right? They're, they've been rescued from child sex trafficking. They've had all this incredible trauma in their lives. But what's interesting is when you're actually there at the facility, it is the most joyous, fun place to be because these girls are safe, they're protected, they're getting great education and counseling. And yeah, they've got some baggage, but it's, it's it, you really feel that being restored feeling, right? So I wanted these to be very childlike in nature, so they're kind of simple and childlike. And so, um, but when taking props, they had to be small. So everything that I could think of that was flat that I could take. But I knew when I was there that I could cut plants down and stuff, right? So there was a lot of gathering when we were there, a little tuk-tuk, you know, like, <laughs> all that like stuff. And so then um, I spent a day with the girls making little ones, so they understood the process and they were excited about it, they loved that. So they all made like eight by 10 ones, and that was fun. And then when we started the process, I'd show them the sketch, and I'd say, here's what it is, here's what it's based on, Who's, who wants to do it? And usually there are like three or four girls. Um, but usually that was in the morning. When it was the last one of the day, it was more like baking. Um, because it got really hot. So you, they were into it, but it's like, oh, no, it's the last one of the day. It's really hot because you can just say, which one's the last one of the day? So these stains, yeah. That's all perspiration. Oh my gosh. Right? This is from them sweating because the exposure time was 10 to 20 minutes. Oh, wow. And they can't move. So when we'd go to make these, every girl had a job. I had them in groups. Okay, so they'd come out, I'd have a group, and they'd all have a job. So if you, you, you might be posing, but then you might be the one who has to put the leaves out or help spread this out or put the rocks out and the notes. And then another person was in charge of getting the flies off of yeah. them, right? Because they'd be laying there going, I gotta move, oh, I gotta no. move, you know? So they'd be go swatting the flies off of them. And so to do the process, I start in a room that we darkened. I had a my gentleman named Ratnack who would iron it. Then I'd grab the fabric and I'd run, 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 run down the hallway. <laughs> and I'd lay it out and we, I bought this big pop-up tent when I was in Cambodia, which is really hard to find, by the way. Don't go shopping for a pop-up tent in Cambodia. Really tough. So um, we got the pop-up tent, we put it underneath, we spread it out, and you're having to move quick because they're getting exposed. Mm -hmm. So the girl lays down, you know, and we, the girls all spread the props out, and I might have to move a few of them, and then we pull the pop-up off, and then it starts. And they just lay there. And then they sweat. And <laughs> get flies. And get flies, and they get sweated up. And then when it's all done, every girl's involved again because we gotta get everything off as quickly as possible so that we don't lose the nice white. Mm -hmm. And then I run, 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 run over to these stations set up to wash the fabric in. The last station, you pour in some hydrogen peroxide and it intensifies the blue. 
and then you hang it up to dry. And there you go. Whoops, and they stop. expose, are they already blue by the time you hung them up? They're, yes. And you're fixing it with the No, there's no fixing. No fixing. So how, how does it not, yeah. how does the areas that are white not become exposed after they get off? It, it's just once the chem, the chemistry is easily dissolved in water. Oh, so you rinse it at the end. So you rinse it. Got it. It's just, okay. a, it's just a, I have a series of wash buckets. Yeah. It's just about washing it. So as soon as they're up, it's, you're picking it up and you're trying to walk yeah. it out. Yeah, so I'm just going to brew into the water, get it yeah. swishing. Really, two minutes in the water and it's, yeah. not good. it's not getting any exposure. Did you say that you bought the roll it was already imbued with the cyanotype? Yes. Okay, so you didn't have to... You didn't have to soak them. No, I thought about salt. doing that, and I thought, that's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, that's a lot. And so I ordered a, a couple of these mm -hmm. from them. I'm not on the roll, but just, you know, their standard way. Yeah. And I tested it to make sure that I, it was as intense a blue as I know I can get when I pre coat myself. And I thought, that's just as good as the ones I do myself. Oh, great. Oh, my gosh. And the other thing is, if it's really old, the blue may not be as good. And so I knew that, so when I called them and I arranged for the bulk roll, it was going to be like fresh off of the manufacturing. So I knew it wasn't going to be old. So it was about, it cost me about $1,200 for the future wow. That's excellent. So it wasn't too bad. So I knew what I was going to do when I was there, but I didn't do it till I got home. So I had them all laying there with the needle and thread and then the girls in the center. But then I came home and I cut it apart with a pair of scissors and then hand stitched it back together again.